Education Pune. Yes, Professor Ismail Agbani, sir, Head Entrepreneurship and Innovation Cell, Symbiosis Institute of Technology. Mr. Ismail Agbani is currently associated with Symbiosis Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, SCEI, a TBI support by, supported by DST, Government of India, as Head Innovation and Linkages. He is also a mentor of change, of change for Atal Innovation Mission, Government of India, and Design Innovation Center under Niti Ayog at GTU. He is also a consultant with Vadwani Foundation, NEN, Chapter Director at Startup Grind, and mentor at Foundation Institute, Ahmedabad. IIT Bombay, Startup India, Business Blaster Initiatives of Delhi Government, as well as AIC RT, uh, RNTU Bhopal and alumnus of VNIT Nagpur and EDII Ahmedabad. Professor Ismail has also been a visiting research fellow in strategy and innovation at IIT Delhi. He is also a doctoral research scholar in artesian entrepreneurship at IIT Delhi. Uh, for his contribution towards promotion of entrepreneurial spirit, Smile was honored with Most Influential Person of India 2020 Award by HUM Foundation. He has also been awarded multiple grants by DST, Government of India, for initiatives related to promotion of entrepreneurship among women and students. Being passionate about enabling the spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation, he has traveled across the country to train mentor people for various organizations, including the linkages of uh, uh, likes of IIT Bombay, Yes Banks, Christo, Tata Motors, IIT Khadakpur, Gwalior Startup Network, VIT Velour, Lupin, CPET, Lucknow, Palwar Chamber of Commerce, IIT Goa, Amazon, Up Startup Fest, and many others. So Professor Ismail is also an accredited entrepreneurship master trainer and a certified design thinker, thinking master party practitioner, a neurolinguistic programming master practitioner, and a Six Sigma black belt. So a very warm welcome, Professor Smile, sir, in this uh, second day of faculty development program. So a very warm welcome you, sir. And sir, we'll take the session on uh, linguistic student uh, uh, relating with students neurolinguistic approach so welcome you sir over to you sir yeah thank you thank you so much uh, uh, first of all thank you for uh, uh, making my uh, tuesday morning a bit more occupied than it actually is <laughs> this is but it's always a pleasure to be talking to fellow faculty. You know, we we keep talking to. By the way, am I? Let, let me start with the question of the you know uh, year that has been. This there is a question. I don't know how many of us know this, but there is a question that is called the question of the year, and that question is am I audio? Right. So am, am I clear audio? Because I'm not using my earphones, so uh, you know. You're audio. Yeah, yes, yes. Absolutely audible. Yeah. Yeah, great. So if at any point of time, sometimes, you know, because of internet connectivity, it doesn't catch, just let me know and I'll, I'll plug in my earphones and the clarity would be better. But I prefer not to use the earphone because it gives me the freedom of staying wherever I want to. So yes, a very good morning. And I can, I'm seeing something in the chat box. Uh, we have like more than 90 participants over here. Right? And yes. Okay, good morning. But you no, know, the, the session, uh, I, I was asked to talk about something related to how do you relate to students because uh, I've been doing a lot of activities. I come from a teaching background originally, so even though my introduction spoke about all this mentor and head of innovation, stuff like that. But I started my career as a teacher. I'm still at the, at the core, I'm still a teacher. I still have the teaching job, which uh, I could have left, but I still want that because being in the classroom is probably the, the, the best time, you know, uh, best experience that I have. And I'm sure most of you relate with that. Irrespective of what other aspects of our job are, sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we're like, why did I even enter into academics? And those times, those kind of thoughts come to you when, when you're out of the classroom. But when you're in the classroom, you know, that's kind of a, time for us when you 
uh, for to me is kind of a spiritual journey when you are with the students no matter what the student the students are no matter what the topic you are teaching but when we are in that class it for that one hour we are totally immersed if you are enjoying right and uh, yeah, how many of how many of you can relate to this what i'm saying just let the you now just uh, type r in the chat box let's see if you can relate to this and those who do not relate relate those who are like no sir i took i took to go to the class just for the sake of duty just for salary i just go in a very sad mood you don't have to type anything in the chat box i will know who you are right but if you are somebody who actually goes to the class to enjoy it, right type something in the chat box type just if if nothing if you are feeling lazy you can just type a r as simple as that Cool. Two, three. I see. Only out of ninety people, only four. Everybody else, you guys don't go to the class to enjoy it. Because if you don't go, then the session of is no use. Now, if you just go into the class, you know, timetable me session hai. I have to complete sixteen hours of teaching per week or twelve hours, whatever your grade is, assistant, associate, or professor, right? Just not making. Yes, yeah, see. Daily feeling to switch to the profession. Yes, we, we daily feel. But the, I'll tell you. Uh, I think Professor Dipal is saying that daily we feel. And trust me, I also have this feeling weekly. Not in daily, but at least once in a week I feel that. But I can also assure you, I'm sure. Also, it is also dependent upon the kind of class we are going into. Yeah, it yeah, also depends. No. Yes. Yeah, it also depends. But but I think that 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 matters very less. You know, the kind of class we are going because if you're really enjoying the subject that you're teaching, the class doesn't matter. You will make the class engaging. You will make the class entertaining, and the class sees you, right? Sometimes I haven't we seen that a lot of times when you go to the class. Sometimes you know when you go to the class and the class is so dull because the teacher before you has done such a good job at you know uh, singing a lori for them that by the time you enter to the class they are they are halfway through meditation, right? And and, and some of them are in yoga poses, but. Because that topic is of so much interest to you, because you are so interested mm -hmm. and passionate about the topic, within ten minutes you are able to light up the class. And suddenly the class that was yes, so that, dull that when is, you entered the class. Of, that is of course there. That is of course there. Yeah. That is of course there. Yeah, exactly. Somebody said teaching is a kind of stress, but so very well relate to this. I mean, when I'm usually when I got mild fever or cold or cough, I'm sitting in my office and I'm feeling like very low, you know. And somebody comes and says, you know, you want to go for a cup of coffee? I'm like, yeah, go get lecture, like what? So let me put me to a class. So I'll go to a class. The moment I walk into a class, five minutes, I'll go and tell the students, you know, I'm very down. I'm not feeling well. Don't don't, don't, don't trouble me a lot. But ten minutes down the line, you'll not be able to tell that this is the same person who uh, ten minutes before was complaining about fever and body pain. And I'm sure again happens with most of us, right? So yeah. So, uh, right? so we can all relate, you know. We, whatever experience, I just wanted to see that the experiences that I come from, right, are more or less similar to the experiences that most of you guys come from. It shouldn't happen. Then, no. And, and again, I don't come from an IIT or IIM. You know, we, we have a different kind of a culture, right? I just come from a, a regular private co co college and and a deep university. I've been into it for past ten, eleven years. Done a lot, lot of experiments, done a lot of new things. And in my early days. Uh, In fact, you know, I was kind of a teacher who used to feel that you know it's the student's responsibility to pay attention, it's their responsibility to listen to me, it's their responsibility to pay respect to me, it is their responsibility to come to the class, it is their responsibility to to be focused in the class. And then what is to happen? I was just twenty four, twenty five, and I joined teaching. And uh, we grew up in in an environment when you know when we were sitting in the school or in the college, and we used to have those blackboards, and then in the college engineering college we used to have green boards, right? But when I started teaching at Simbaches, we used to have the white boards and the markers. Now we you know we grew up in an environment when if the teacher was writing something on the board, solving a mathematics problem or something, you know, and if a kid was making some noise, if some student was disturbing the class, laughing. Not interest, not showing, you know, interest. What would the teacher do? He would just take the piece of chalk that was in his hand, break it into smaller pieces, and throw that chalk piece at the student. Right? How many of you relate? How many of you had that chalk piece? Right? How many of you can relate to this? And see, if if you're talking about relating to the students, if we don't relate with each other, how are you going to relate to students? I'm trying to establish that base here, right? First. And then when I started joining my very first lecture, the very beginning of my class, I never used white uh, chalks in my entire career because when I joined, by the time I joined and I joined symposiums, they already had all white boards and white board markers, so I never had the opportunity to teach on a white board or a green board. Of course, once in a while, I used to take some additional classes at Gate Four or so. Maha pe I've done, but formal lectures, man. I always, you know, right from day one, I had white board markers. Now, that habit, that that impression was in the mind that you know, when the kids are disturbing the class, you throw chalk. 
And the same thing I started doing. So when I would go and teach, and then there were kids who were disturbing the class, if there were kids who were not focused in the class, making disturbance, uh, making noise, right? What would I do? I would imitate the teachers that I had seen. And the first instinctive reflex reaction would be that I would throw that marker at them. But the problem was, when <laughs> those teachers used to throw, those were smaller chalks. And what I was throwing was a pretty much 40, 30, 40 grams, 50 grams of big mm-hmm. marker. Right? And within the first week, I had a complaint against me. To the HOD, right? That you no, know, uh, this new teacher has come up and he's so angry in the class. We 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 cannot even if, our, if we drop our pen by mistake, and if we went to pick up the class, he, he throws us out of the class. And you know, he teaches good. He has practice. I, I came from NIT, so of course I had that conceptual knowledge. And the subject I was teaching was my master subject, so that I was good at. And that that day, I also appreciated that you know the content he brings in, the example he brings, in, everything is good, but we feel so suffocated in this class. We feel so tense in his class because the moment he enters for us, it's like you know any moment he's going to ask uh, somebody to stand up and throws out of class, even just for 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 you not know, trying to uh, pick up our pain that has dropped. And then says, uh, or, or if we just turn to our neighbor, you no, know, the next student to ask for a pain or something, uh, any time a marker would come flying at us and hit us anywhere. And then uh, other complaint was that he's not good with with his aim, right? So I would aim at uh, some, some other student, it would go and hit the, the student sitting at the back 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 behind him. <laughs> That's when my HOD called and no, tried to kind of counsel me that you're doing good, you're young. And uh, he was a nice guy again. He was also a young fellow and he tried to explain to me that, you know, I got good uh, uh, points also about you. You have this knowledge, you have this practice, and you have this desire to teach. Why don't you channelize it? Because if you keep doing this, very important thing he told me that if you keep doing this, it will become you versus them. And when you are in a classroom, you don't want it to be you versus them. You want to be one team with them. You want them to be in your team. And the moment you are able, the day you are able to do that one team, right? That is the day you will actually really become a good teacher. That is the day you will be, they will be able to, no, they will respect you. And then uh, uh, that night when I came back and I started thinking, and one of my HODs when I was studying, when I was a student, and we used to have a HOD called Professor Ugran, and she was South Indian. And uh, he once, uh, I don't know, we had done some mischief in the class and some teacher was very frustrated at us. And he was teaching manufacturing technology. So he left the class and then the HOD came in. We were in third year only. And he kind of scolded us. And then at the end, he started giving that pep talk and that motivation talk and things like that. And in that talk, he, he made one sentence that's still with me. And he said, no, respect is never demanded. It has to be earned and commanded. And if you go around in the class and if you start demanding that respect, you know, that, that oh, I, I'm a PhD from IIT and I'm an tech from NIT and I got 15 years of experience. And I know this subject, you are kids, I have more experience than your age and things like that. And so you should respect me by default. That probably worked when we were kids. In our generations, I remember when you used to sit at the canteen, our college canteen was almost like 100, 150 meters away from our main college building. Right? And when you we would be sitting over there, and again, I'm sure most of you would relate to this. We would be sitting on a canteen table having some snacks and uh, 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 four or five of us classmates. And then we would see some faculty members walking towards the canteen. And they're like 50 meters away, 30 meters away. You know? And from there, we would see and we would get up and we would move away with whatever we, the plates we had, the, the tea cups, whatever we were having. Everything in our hand, we would stand in a corner and eat it. But we would not there. And even though they would come and take some other table and chair, there were a lot of tables and chairs that they could occupy. But but, but the respect level we had was that if faculty are coming over to the canteen, in those faculty are sitting at some table and chair, we do not dare to be sitting on a, any other table chair while the faculty are there because that's the mark of respect. If faculty is there, we have to be standing. Right? And I, I'm talking about not so far ago, just 15 years ago. I mean, 2004, five, I was in a college, in college. But if you see today, the culture that you see. And that, that is one thing that irritated me. When I joined Symbiosis as a teacher, I came from that culture. And then I was at NIT Nagpur, VNIT, again, a government institute, regional NIT. So you have a different kind of culture over there, total respect for the faculty. You know, they kind of dominate you over there. And uh, when I came to this, uh, to here at Symbiosis, you know, private college, and I was so shocked that, you no know, lunchtime, 1 to 2 p.m., so much of rush at the canteen, the limited number of tables. And we would walk around to the canteen. There are students who are sitting over there all around. They would see us. Right? And a group of faculty, not only, it's not only me, we would have the HOD along with us sometimes, you know, senior faculty members, people who are 50, 60 years of age. And uh, we, normally we faculty, when we go to canteen, we rarely go alone, right? We usually go in, with, with our colleagues. So we would go three, four people, seniors, juniors together. 
and I would be surprised. I've got a HOD along with us, senior faculty. This kids, there's no place for us to sit. We take our cup of coffee. We are no or, or tea. We're standing in the corner, having and next to us, just next to us, there, there, there are a bunch of kids who we teach in the class, who we had a lecture in the morning, and they are sitting over there. They're looking at us. They're just smiling, right? And I was like, these kids don't even have that respect that they should at least you know, offer us the seat. I mean, you know, I came from that. Uh, that was my thought process. Like, I'm the teacher. You're supposed to offer me that seat, right? And then that would frustrate me. And I was like, what kind of a culture uh, we are in here? But then gradually over the years, as I started getting it, and I started realizing that the, the times are changing. Right? But on other days, you know, just because I had that red, uh, I, so we have the ID card that we wear, the students have that blue strap, blue lace, whatever they call it. And the faculty has the red one. So it's identifiable against the faculty or staff. And I was like, gone are those, those, those days when just because you got a separate ID card in, uh, hanging around you, people would respect you. Right? Then how, and that's where my journey began. That's where my entire journey of understanding. I was like, how do I become a good teacher? Because, you know, as a young 25, 24 year old young guy who actually left Tata Motors for a job, who left in the aeronautics for a job, just because I wanted to come into academics, make a difference. And then I was not able to do that. I was like, no, I came here and, and I would feel frustrated. Tata ka job for the public defense, you know, I left a minister of defense for a job to come and teach and make a make an impact. And these students don't value. And I would go and brag every class, you know, guys, you know, every class I would get angry and say, I left Tata ka job for you guys and you don't respect me. And then I realized over a period of time, that the students don't care what I left for. They don't care where I studied. They don't care what degrees I got. Right? They're like, okay, you, you left Tata Ka job, your choice. We did not ask you to. Right? We did not come at your home and we did not bring you to symbiosis at that point and force you to teach us. Right? We did not say that you go and get your PhD at IIT or, or Stanford or Harvard, wherever you study. We are here to learn, but when we used to go to student in college, in our days, the, the goal was learning. And we, we used to go for education. These days, kids go to the classroom not for education, right? They go for edutainment. They don't just want education. They also want to be entertained, in, engaged, and interested. Because if you just want to talk about education, they're like, dude, I get that on Google also. I get that on YouTube also. When I was studying, the only way I could get some knowledge, some clarification was either through the teacher or through the books in the library. Right? And that again, there would be like you no know, 60 students in the class, but only four or five copies of the textbook. So we would always be, be waiting when will I get that book? We did not have YouTube. I, I, I grew up in a pre YouTube era, right? We did not have YouTube. We did not have platforms like Coursera and ADX and MPTA. This case today, they have access to everything. So how do I be, I know, and that's the journey, I know the, some, some of the points I'm making are very basic, very common sense, but I'm just trying to share to, to help you relate where I am coming from. Right. And I'm sure that a lot of you would either have had the same journey, or some of you might be in that journey right now. Uh, some of you might have had a different journey, but you would relate. And this is what typically happens. And the most important thing I learned in the process is that if I have to be an impactful teacher, right, apart if I have to be a good teacher, if I have to be somebody who is respected, and today I get so many WhatsApp messages by students who have graduated four years from before, five years before. Right? I mean, I don't have any marks that I control now. I don't control their attendance anymore. I have no influence on their life whatsoever. But when while they are in the college, if they come back and wish you thank you, I probably don't take it very seriously because I know somehow probably they know I'm going to give them marks and attendance. So a part of it is a whole better. Right? But when four years down the line, five years down the line, when he, he when the kid gets a new job uh, or gets a promotion and you are one of the first people that that kid calls, that is where you feel that, okay, I will do something good. And I, done some, I made some impact. And that happened when I started realizing that the most important thing, apart from my concept, Clarity, my practical uh, exposure to the topic that I'm teaching, my domain expertise, of course, that is required. And that we all have by, by virtue of our education, our PhD, our research, our own training, our own personal know that we keep reading books that we read. But apart from that, I think the most important thing that we need to learn and need to have is how do we relate to the students. Right? Because once you are able to relate to them, that is when the magic starts happening. That's when you start seeing the difference in the way you, you look at yourself, you look at the students and, and the students look at you. That's the reason when I was asked to you know, uh, come up with the topic also, I was given the freedom that we are having this FDP and whatever topic you think is suitable. I, I speak on 10 different topics and I could have chosen any topic, but then I thought, let me talk about this concept of you know how do we relate to the students. But before I do, how many of you can relate to me whatever I'm speaking so far?
yes command is definitely wrong, dr devyani i totally agree you, you as i said your domain knowledge your, your conceptual clarity your practical exposure to the topic that you teach especially if you are into professional education just theoretical knowledge is no more enough they are like theoretical knowledge that you do pep milta right so that that command and they can see that that is important but i have seen so many people we see i'm all of you must be having some colleagues out there who are so wonderful so great in their subject knowledge their command of the subject is so great they have written books they have like 500 research papers i mean no it is yet when they go to the classroom term is down the line half of the class is sleeping right so command is of course necessarily but it's not no we, we in, in mathematics when we do you know especially most of you who are from engineering background you know or, or science or science background math background when we do those derivations at the end we write the statement that this is a necessary and sufficient condition to prove that lhs equals to rhs Right, our command over subject, this domain knowledge, our expertise, our PhD, our research—all those things are necessary, not, not, not demeaning their importance here. Right, I'm totally uh, <laughs> with that. But they are necessary, but they are not sufficient anymore. Right. In addition, we need to that as well. Right. Interaction is very important. Right. Yes, yes, totally, totally agree. Right. Now, so if you can relay. the another thing what what is the number one challenge that we as teachers have right now in the online teaching learning world that we are here so i know this is a question a little bit off the topic but i want to start with this what's the what's your number one challenge today when you are doing the online teaching learning right and i know most of us are kind of bored now we are waiting for the offline classes to start we, we, we are kind of fed up earlier day it was fun i could take lectures from my home i did not have to get ready and go and be presentable i could be you know just in my room and take the lecture but now it's getting so frustrating it's getting so boring and i mean some of us i think so that, that some of my colleagues are like you know if this online teaching learning continues for one more year i am going to quit teaching forever because this is not what i signed up for i wanted to be in the classroom i want to be with the students right attendance get them connected right missing live interaction but what is one thing that you expect the students to do in in the online classes and they don't do it respond oh, they don't even respond in offline classes usually right so while they don't of course, of course online the percentage is even less but in, even in offline you be you know hardly 20% respond but what is that something that particularly you want in the online class that is not required in offline class but in online you want them you it makes you happy as a teacher you know, you feel happy if they do that it's but they don't the reaction sir interaction you want to see they them and you want to see them. their reactions to what you're saying in you want to see them see their reaction right and you, and you want to see their responses to what you were saying yes but, but why is it so important so that because it gives me a feedback and, and, and the when they do the live sir session uh, ah. so uh, yeah so yeah, exactly right yes. so so if they don't if, if they don't respond if if they don't type in the chat box uh, if their cameras are off how do you feel as a teacher that doesn't make sense i don't i i don't feel comfortable because i don't know whether i'm connecting with them or i'm making what i'm saying is making sense to them ah, exactly now you get how i am feeling at this very moment right now so you want us to keep the cameras on <laughs> I am. I am not telling you anything. You guys are smart people. You are PhDs. You are teachers. वो हिंदी में कहावत है इशारे को समझदार काफी होता है मैं खुद से कुछ नहीं बोलूँगा, right? Because but you guys are smart enough. You can relate to me. You you now. I just wanted to see whether you also understand the pain and you can feel. If you really feel uh, something for a fellow teacher, you know what to do. I I'm not going to tell anybody what to do, right? But with that, you know, uh, you're smart people. Let's see how many of you actually get what what what, what where I was headed with that. and uh, okay so having said that's so okay at least somebody there's one person on the screen i can see right okay see the po the point is you know the most important uh, uh, parameter and i i keep telling i, I go to a lot of faculty development programs and i see students you know and i'm not students you know kids you know uh, they say that they 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 follow your example more than what you preach right i have seen i have so many colleagues of mine who go to conduct a lecture and their own camera is off and they boast about it ke main to na camera off karke main class leta hu apna mast baith ke chill karke aap ko samne and then very good you know your camera is off and then you expect the students to keep your their cameras on right so if we ourselves as a teacher and then we get frustrated you know what kind of a students are this you are not away you are not there in the class you are not turning your cameras on you cannot just no even if it is for phone you don't respect me you don't you don't want to interact but when it is our turn right when we go and attend meetings when we go and attend faculty development programs when we participate in training, how many of us keep our cameras on right 
And isn't that a hypocrisy? We talk about politicians. Hypocrisy is everywhere. Right? So if, if you are somebody who expects your teachers just to, to keep their cameras on, to, uh, be interactive, comment in the chat box, if you are somebody, right, uh, who, who wants them to be interactive, but if you are not turning your camera on here, if you are not interacting, you have no right to criticize any politician for being hypocritical. Right? Next time you think, hey, this politician is a double line, ask me what I do. Don't I do that? Right? So I, I'm sometimes I, I'm a little blunt, I'm a, a little very harsh, but you have to do it, right? And you got some, some such smart students out there, some such, such you know very grown up mature students. I know I have to speak every word very carefully in the classroom. I'm both fine, but here every word that I speak is to be right? But with that, let's move on, and I'm going to start sharing a presentation. Where before you guys start thinking, okay, this guy has that more no, no preparation, and I just talk to him. So I got a very nice. So where do I go? So, just let me know if oh, what's wrong here. Something. I'm actually not very sure. I rarely use Google Meet. Normally, Zoom is something that I'm very fond of, very composite. So let me see. Okay. For some reason, I don't know why. why I'm, not able to, uh, I'm not able to share my PowerPoint today. To a tab. Okay. Let me see. Why is it not coming? I don't see it. I see only my browser screen, but I don't see my PPT screen. I'm trying to share. Please. Just give me a moment. I'll put it on drive, probably, then it should work from the back and play it from the browser. I think you have to open, please open your PPT. It is already open. open the PPT and it's already that. open. It's already open. But when, I, when I'm clicking on, on, on the share screen button, it is not even showing me that. It's just showing me that, uh, you know, my Google Chrome browser is showing uh, no other option to share. So anyways, give me a moment. What I'll do is I, I'll, I'll uh, put my PPT on, on the Google Drive so that it, it comes on the browser online and then I can share from there. <laughs> Hmm? I have a class at Okay, while it gets uploaded on the drive, right? Let me, I can continue without the presentation also for a while. Because it is so Sir, you can just. Yeah, because, <coughs> because I am using my bandwidth here for this also, so it's taking some time to upload. But now, before we, no, let's move on to the topic. We're talking about relating the, to the students, right? Now, when I talk about relating to the students, a simple question again, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions. You guys are used to ask questions in your class. Today, you are on the other side. Right. So I'm going to make you feel how it feels when you keep asking so many questions to your students. And that's how you relate to the students also. Where do you think your students live? Simple question. Where do you think your students live? Don't, don't say, sir, Punjab mein rehte, Jammu Kashmir mein rehte. In the class? No. They don't live in the class. Even if they're physically in the class, they don't live in the class. Fun world, okay. What else? Imagination. Oh, in our hearts. Very good. They live in a Do world. Do they know that fantasy? they live in your hearts? Fantasy in the world of fantasy. In the world of fantasy, okay. okay. In your own, own thoughts, right? Okay, interesting. What else? 
uh, somebody said very interesting you know they live in our hearts but do they know that they live in your hearts do we let them know do, do we make them realize that in their own world right so let me tell you they live in two worlds and not only students we all live in two worlds right the first one being the mental world right or i call it the mental plane and every all of us live in that mental plane and then this second plane called the physical plane the real world out there and anything that we do in the physical plane in the real world is preceded by something in the mental world right have you ever done something without that thing going through your mind first even when the so called impulse reaction that you say i did it impulsively i did without thinking right but the the instruction the command for saying that for doing that for whatever action you did that command came from your mind right so the first thing we will everything so you no know, if i have to say something to you if i have to make fun of somebody if i have to make engaging you no know, don't we first do it in our, our minds right i have to make this lecture so when i was planning about this in the morning everything was even while i was taking shower it was going in my mind okay what examples am i going to give today what where am i going to start how am i going to you no know, try to relate to them so everything first happens in the mental plane right and then we put it into the physical plane out there that what i'm doing right now now it's going into the reality right so if we have to understand the students right we have to relate to them the most important thing is first that we understand their mental plane right how how and how how they live in the mental plane so this fortunately for us you know all, there is a common uh, set of you know what you can say principles a common methodology that makes up our mental plane that makes up about how we think how we feel right so while we're talking about relating to the students but to relate to the students i need to understand what they think right how they feel about the subject about education about me as a teacher about, about their own lives right what do they think what do they see around themselves right what do they hear from their colleagues what do they hear from from the world out there you know the biggest challenge today is that you know you you try to impress upon the students that you know what i'm teaching in the class is important it is very useful and we are doing it for the best of you know for, for your good and you should learn this and then the student goes to social media and there is some self proclaimed guru out there who saying this education system is bakwas and whatever they teach you in college is of no use so come and attend my class pay, pay 5000 rupees to me and do my training programs i will make you industry ready the college is not going to make you industry ready and i'm you know and ironically that that dude himself came out of a college system so th- that's what they're hearing so in, why why in the class we're trying to tell them okay this is important learn this the moment is out of the class there's so much of noise happening around him so much of negative you uh, know uh, ne- negativity around him telling him that whatever he is doing in the college whatever is being taught in the classroom is useless whatever is taught in the cl- classroom is irrelevant but to some extent it might be true right try to agree okay to some extent 20 30% 40% of the things that we teach that we discuss in our our lectures in our classrooms in our syllabus are kind of old kind of a little bit outdated right and but there are reasons also to some extent okay we, we are to blame but then uh, there are certain things that even know uh, for example somebody came the other day and say you know the java 17 happening uh, out there but in college they are still teaching us java 8 i'm like do you, you don't directly teach somebody to ride a ride a, <laughs> a super bike before you you teach him to ride a bicycle right so i when i was in my early days somebody was like you know when there are softwares like autocad and all these cad softwares why do you still teach uh, engineering drawing manually using drafters but these things people don't understand so th- there are certain logical reasons so some 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 places we are at fault but the point i'm trying to make here is that no the one of the major reasons is that we we try to convince them that what we are doing is good but then the entire world is telling them that this education system is screwed up it is not you of any good and it's not going to help you out and then what is the kid supposed to do every time he sits in your classroom those voices come at the back of his mind he called to a youtube i heard a video i saw a video on instagram i saw a reel that was talking about this and if, if they are right right everybody is saying that if, if so many so many people are saying that so they may be right they must be right and then if that's right then why am i sitting in this class why am i listening to what this teacher is talking about at the moment that thought comes to their mind right what happens they get disconnected they are like okay this is of no use to me so now because i have to you know maintain 75% attendance uh, or whatever the attendance percentage is so i'm going to stay in there 
Now, how do we understand that? How do we get into their minds? Right? And again, it's very difficult, but I'm going to give certain steps or certain certain insights that come from this science called neuro linguistic programming. And I'm going to give a quick introduction and then we'll talk about something very important that I, I, by the end of the session, you, you would have much more clarity about yourself, your students and probably everyone around you. And, and why do we need to talk about this? So there's a video I wanted to play in my presentation, but since you know it's taking time, so I'll just give you the, the crux of the video. It's Simon Sinus' video, the guy who wrote the book, Start With The Why. And in the video, he talks about something very interesting. He says that, you know, there's a, and that clip is available on YouTube. So he says that it's one minute clip. Uh, it says that I don't care uh, what you, you know, how good your product is. So he's talking about business people, but I think it's equally relevant to everybody, even teachers. Right? Uh, he, when, when talking about business people, you know, uh, businessman is telling them that, you know, I don't care how good your product is, how I don't care how your sales is, I don't care how your business model is. If you don't understand people, you don't understand business. Makes so sense, man. Because I do a lot of entrepreneurship training. I work with startups, and this is one thing I keep telling them always. And the same thing I keep telling faculty also that you know, same thing. I have just modified it, and I know again not not to not not to be rude over here, not not to not to kind of uh, uh, belittle anybody's credentials or anybody's you know uh, expertise. But wouldn't it be true if you said that you know, no matter how 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 good your PhD degree is, no matter where you're this is funny project you got no case of experience you have if you can't understand the students if you don't relate to them right you don't understand teaching as simple as that because this teaching starts with the students and with the students everything else is everything else we do is, is to support that teaching unfortunately somehow through certain systems and no regulatory bodies as well uh, a lot of other complementary work has become the prime focus and teaching it takes us you know uh, uh, back seat sometimes but that's what we are there for and how do I understand it? So that's where comes the science of neuro-linguistic programming. What does neuro-linguistic programming stand for? So if you see the word, right, it's neuro-linguistic programming. It talks about neurology programming, your programming, your neurology through the use of language. Linguistics is about language. And now the question comes, where does language come in, in this entire discussion of relating with students' understanding mind, right? So let me tell you one very important thing. Everything that we do in this world is through communication, right? And the mode of communication is the language we use. We use what some language, right? Be it uh, whatever language you use, English, you use Hindi, Marathi, whatever it is. Even in fact, when you communicate with machines, you're communicating with a language. That's a machine language, right? You you're writing programs in Python, you're writing programs in R, you're writing programs in C plus two. What are those? The languages you're using to com communicate with the machine. And when these machines are communicating with each other, the Internet of Things that you talk about, the artificial intelligence that you talk about, right? The industry 4.0 that you talk about, the communication cyber physical system that you talk about. When they communicate, they're also communicating using a language. We don't want to focus on that language, right? But when I say language here, is not the language. I'm not talking about the language English, Hindi, Marathi. When we say language here, is the, the way you use that language. Right? So we are, if you look at your life, right? Except for the part when you are sleeping or unconscious, when you're not conscious, mostly when you're sleeping, right? Every moment of your life when you're awake, fully awake, fully conscious, you are communicating either to the outside world Friends, family, colleagues, peers, something by email, by WhatsApp, by chat, by personally, whatever it is. Or if you're not committing with, communicating with somebody outside, you're communicating with yourself all the time, all the time, all the time. Right? What are we doing when we are not doing anything? We're sitting, and what are we doing when we're sitting? Have you ever been just sitting, doing nothing, except for maybe if you're doing meditation, that's a different thing. If you master the art of meditation, even in meditation, in the early days, you face that trouble, trouble that you, you can't stop thinking while you're meditating. Right? But then over a period, you master that, 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 that art. But otherwise, we are always thinking. When we are thinking, what, we are, what are we doing? We are constantly talking to ourselves. Right now, you are talking to yourself. Right? Is this guy making sense? Is this session worth in attending? Should I, should I close this and go to that other meeting I have? Should I, should I rather close this and go watch a movie? Right? Is there going to be any sense? But what is this talking about? You know, what, what is that? You are thinking to yourself and you are talking to yourself while you are thinking. In fact, I'm talking to myself, you know, I'm thinking that, oh, what are these people thinking? Suddenly, nobody's playing the chat box, the cameras are going off. Are these people getting bored? Are these people not finding any relevance in what I'm speaking? Are these people not interested? So one way, I, one side, I'm thinking, talking to you, the other side, at the back of my mind, I'm thinking. Right? That is the power of communication. 
and the entire reality that comes to my mind when the students think whether this teacher is good or not whether the subject is worth studying or not whether this teacher is worth attending his lectures or not whether this college is good or not whether this entire curriculum is is good for me or not right when is thinking right consistently thinking and what affects his thinking when we think we take input from the outside world right so our reality the mental reality i was talking about is created based on the inputs we receive from the outside world so how do we receive the inputs from the outside world there are five senses that we have and those are our only channels of receiving information from the outside world how do i know somebody is a good person or a bad person i either saw him doing something bad or i either saw him doing something good right through my vision senses eyes and i see that guy is a good i see him so many times giving charity and helping poor people or oh, that guy is so bad i see him beating his kids right so that's one one way of the input that i get this is basic things but i'm just trying to know connect the dots here other is my sense of audio right so i heard somebody shouting i heard somebody cursing using foul language always screaming i heard hear my neighbor always shouting at his wife so i know that the guy is not a good guy or i hear somebody doing you no know, some amazing work and i'm like oh, this is a good person so that's the second sensor the third sensor we has the sense of the feeling the, the the sensor of feeling you know some some inputs we get when we feel things you no know, a lot of times we know say, i can feel it i don't know why but i can feel it that is good it's not good it's bad right so same way you know so apple is red i can see it you know lata mangeshkar is such a beautiful singer was such a beautiful singer right i could hear it how do i know lata mangeshkar was such an amazing singer so my auditory sensor right and then how do i know whether something is hot or cold the water is hot or cold whether my tea is hot or cold right by the sense of touch sense of feeling and then there is a fourth sense that we have there is a sense of smell right how do i know whether sometimes the food is good or rotten you know usually ladies in the house they may be find out that the, the food is not good for consumption anymore it was cooked yesterday because it's smelling bad now right and the sense of taste sometimes you taste you know you, you, you taste some medicines you don't like it you like it so these five senses make up your mental reality so the question is we all have similar senses we all have two eyes we all have two ears or whatever the senses we have right and when we look at some common event happening some common incident all of us are getting the same input right so for example uh, you know uh uh shark attacking i don't know how many of you see you might have heard this scene on social media right so when you watching shark attack in india right now all of us watching a particular episode of shark attack we are getting the same audio we are listening to the same dialogues right as any i am i am hearing other dialogue you are hearing other dialogue everybody in the country no matter what part of the country you are tuning from in that moment when you are watching that that shark attack episode you are listening the same dialogue the same audio is going in your ears you are seeing the same thing same video everybody is seeing the same thing right now in case of humans that uh, the the sense of touch and uh, sorry uh, taste and smell is not as strong as some animals okay. so usually the three senses are dominant visual auditory and your uh, feeling so now and when i watch a tv serial usually is a visual and auditory that that mix of the representation when i remember a tv scene you know from 10 years ago shole ka dialogue you know ye haath mujhe de de thakur at the moment i say that you have that voice echoing in your mind and you also have that scene you know of gabbar and uh, uh, talking to thakur so that any any mental reality is created the structure of a mental reality is that it is created of sounds it's created of images and it's created of feelings right your first probably <coughs> the first time you won some award was first time you when you were appreciated or when you got your phd or when somebody appreciated as a kid you know if you remember that instant something that's a very strong memory for you and if you close your eyes and if you start remembering it you'll be able to visualize it you'll see those images exactly as if you were there right now you will hear exactly what people were telling you how they were clapping for you how they were appreciating you those sounds are still and you will also feel it. right so if you just want to experiment you know i'll give a small a small experiment you can do right now later also just close your eyes for a moment and try to think some very amazing memory from your life it could be the day you got engaged the day you got married the day you had your first child and you you saw that child for the first time you know or, or, or the day you got your first salary and came back home and gave it to your wife or your parents or, or the first time you were a class topper or, or your first crush whatever it is or something that that that's very very positive very happy pleasant memory for you just think of it close your eyes think of it for a minute 
right? You'll be able to see that image. You'll be able to hear exactly. You may have forgotten the words, what exactly was spoken, but still you'll hear those sounds. The most importantly, by the end of one minute, you'll find yourself smiling. Right. So as, if you just close your eyes and, and ask somebody to uh, keep a camera, your, your selfie camera on and just record while your eyes are closed, but let the camera record you and then go back and look and you see that just 10, 15 seconds after you started visualizing it, you know, your face started becoming happy. You, you're smiling as if you are in that moment. And you know why that happens? Because even those feelings are stored in the structure of that experience in your mind, along with the sound and images. So the exact feelings you had then, you start feeling right now. And that is the reason when we start thinking of negative incidents in our life, you know, the best way to get depressed, if you want to feel bad now, right, if you want to feel depressed, right, and if you want to tell somebody that I'm depressed, you don't have to act. Just sit down in a corner five minutes and start thinking the worst tragedies of your life. Start thinking them, start imagining them. And suddenly five minutes down the line, you become as sad, as depressed as you were then. So that's the, that's the, the, the point I'm trying to say here again is that these are the things that make our experience. But the question is, coming back to the Shark Tank example, same in audio, same video, everybody's going to do. But when I ask 10 different people, what do you think about that particular episode of Shark Tank? Do you think everybody's going to give me the same response? Yes or no? Let's see how many of you are active, how many of you have gone back to your lectures and meetings. The level of intelligence, the receptiveness of the message, okay, interesting, what else? Right, a simple question. Ten people watching the same episode of Shark Tank, getting the same sensory input, same dialogue, same music, same dance, same visuals. But if I ask them, how, how, how was this episode? Describe it. Is it going to be the same? No, the responses would be different. Now comes the question, why so? Right? If the input was the same, if everybody was receiving the same message, listening to the same dialogue, watching the same images, hearing the same music, then why is their response, their impression, their feedback, their opinion about it different? Because perceptions are different. Perception. What makes these perceptions? I mean, if, if the input was the same, shouldn't the perception that is formed be the same again? Perceptions are formed based on what, on the inputs, right? What on based on what I see, what I hear, what I feel. So if I'm if everybody's seeing the same thing, if everybody is hearing the same thing, if everybody is feeling the same thing, then why are the perceptions different? Exposure again, but they're they being exposed to the same episode. They're right? they're dependent. They're watching they're the perceptions same are different because we have different experiences. That's that's yeah. No two people can have same perception. So when definitely. you're talking, somebody said mental. Somebody said mental condition. Somebody said mental conditioning, right? So, so what, what uh, right? Yes, yeah, somebody's talking about deleting and modifying something exactly. You know, so that's where I was headed, right? So, what happens? The inputs that we get are the same, but before these inputs are registered in our minds, there is a filter. Not every sensory input that we get, right, is registered in our mind. They say every minute or every moment we receive almost 2 billion bytes of information, sensory information. And if our mind was to start registering and processing all of them, we would end up in Agra Pagal Khan. Right? That's too much of information for us to process. I'll give, let me give an example. Right now, when I'm speaking, right, you have been listening to me, so that's one input you're getting. You are observing on the screen, so that's another. In fact, in the screen also, there are so many colors. The image that you see on the screen is not a single color. So there are so many different bytes of information, even in just one image, right? My audio is made up so, of so many bytes, so that's the information you're getting. But at the same time, you know, you are there's a wall in front of you which has some color, and you're, you're looking at that wall, and that color is information also going at you. You have a laptop in front of you which has black or black keys, and that that, that information is also going, going going to you. You probably have a fan running, and the fan is making some sound, and that information also is coming to you. You have some noise background noise coming up, children kids playing in the kitchen. There is there's something cooking, so you can hear that, or probably somebody shouting out there, or some street vendor is there selling something uh, uh, out there, or you're hearing some some other colleague talking to somebody else on the phone so many inputs are coming to you right and they are all coming to your mind but how many of them were you aware with before i told you how many the color of your wall i mean you're looking at you know it's green color it's purple color but how many processing that in that moment 
how many of you are processing that traffic ka sound how many of you are processing that you know in fact while i am talking mere background pe this traffic sound and you might be getting some of that traffic noise because my home is uh, on the road so i can get a lot of traffic and i'm working from over there so what happens our mind but you you were just processing what i am speaking right most of the inputs that you were getting you kind of did not even register in your mind because if you started registering everything you would go crazy so this is the thanks to those filters so any information that comes to us i have a image a nice image and is waiting for the presentation to to load up so i can show you that image it will be much more easy okay the presentation is ready just give me a moment it will be much you know more easy for you to process and understand what i want to say if you have an image in front of you because as again i said no our reality is made up of uh videos and you know wh- why they say that when you go to class you should have a presentation you should show videos nice images uh, and not just keep what's the problem not just keep speaking because when i'm speaking you know you are getting <coughs> what's the problem man yeah. just a minute just you know why why the display Oh. I I mean just just I'm just trying to see if I can load my PPT but I uploaded it but um, somehow again it's, okay. it's Please good. try to share it through window. I think you're yeah, trying I'm, through tab. I I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'll, let me try once more. So I uploaded the presentation to the drive but it's not playing on the drive now it's saying that the PPT is too big in size because it contains some video so it says the file size is too big uh, I don't know. let me try once more let me try the window option no it's not doing that let me see the try the share the entire screen if it works no no it says i cannot it cannot share the screen also i don't know what's wrong Usually it works very well. I don't know today what what sorts works in. Or uh, maybe there is some update that I I am need to do or not for. Anyways, okay, good, good. One 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 good thing I could do. One thing I can do is just realize I can just Google that diagram on internet and share it. need that ppt because anyways i have copied that from google only so just a minute i'm actually directly sharing that image only online why is this not working that image is so small Yeah, cool. So at least I can now share from the browser browser directly. Yeah. 
Please share to your entire screen. Yeah, I'm trying that also. Remember, it's, I don't know, somehow it's yeah. not. Yeah, this should work. Yes. Yeah, cool. At least now, so the PPT is not coming, but I, can you see the image on the screen? Is the image visible? No, sir. No? Yeah. Uh, yeah, now it's visible. Yeah, now it is visible. Oh, so I just stopped sharing. I thought it's not coming. Let me share it again. Yeah. Okay, it was. I'll, I'll, I'll share again. Yeah. Let me know when, when, when it, it is when it loads. Is it visible now? Yeah, 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 now it's visible. Okay, cool. So this is what I have been talking about. You know, that, that there is something that happens in the external. From the right to left, we are looking at this image from right to left, right? And this is what we call as the neural linguistic programming communication model. That is how we communicate with the world. Right? So our communication is there's an external event, anything that happens externally, our five senses. They are constantly getting, you know, millions of bits of information every moment. Um, before that information gets in my mind, you know, it goes through certain filters. And now I was talking about the same that the filters we have are different. So the information you're getting through the senses, all 10 people who are watching Shark Tank got the same information, but their filters are different. And because the filters are different, they're filtering out different things. And because they're filtering out different things, the things that are going into their mind to create that perception, to create a reality are different, resulting in a different internal perception. Right? So what are these filters? There are three filters that are constantly working on every information we get, right? First filter is the filter, filter that we call as generalization. So what we do is, for the sake of simplicity, to help us remember things and to help us make sense of things, our mind is you know, kind of used to generalize things. So what, what do I mean when I say generalize? We, we take up one or two instances. It's like, you know, hypothesis testing, what you do, you pick up a sample and, and, and if the sample satisfies certain conditions, you say, okay, the entire population uh, yeah, is like this, right? Similarly, generalization is when, you know, you take up one or two instances, one or two, uh, you know, uh, events, and then you, or you take up one or two examples and then you generalize it across the category. For example, you know, uh, uh, you go to a call. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, a student comes to your college. You go to a college. You're teaching for for the first time to a class, right? Maybe your college or a new college, and it's, you see your first day for a new class. You have never taught that class before. You don't know the students yet. And in your first lecture, you started the class, right? And, and then a student comes five minutes late to the class. It's a third year ka class, so these people are in the class in college for five five semesters now. That right? is a senior student. He gets five minutes late in the class, right? And comes and. and no, oh, say sorry, ma'am. Uh, uh, whatever it's really wants to give, and, and he comes, and then you're like, okay, you probably, and you're somebody who doesn't like late comers, but still, okay, first time you allow it, but you in the mind that this guy is coming late, he's, not, he's probably not a sincere student, but okay, first time. Second lecture, next day, very next day, you go to the class, and again you start a lecture, and that kid again comes late five minutes late, right? Now, what is your impression about that kid? What, do you, what, what, what is the impression you make about that student? That he is not a sincere student, right? So I, I, I'm, while I'm sharing the screen, I cannot see the chat. So uh, as long as the screen is shared, if you are, I have to answer anything, right? just uh, unmute and speak it up because I'm unable to see the chat when the screen is being shared. I can only see the screen over here. Chat is not visible to me. So the very thing, no, the very natural thing that happens to me as a teacher Sir, is that the, yesterday he was late, Buddha also is late. This is kid is not a good student. Yes, yes. Yes, either it is his habit or he is deliberately hello? doing it to test the patience of the teachers. <laughs> yeah, and yes. Yes, so yeah, either it is a habit or is he deliberately doing but the, the, the crux of it is that he is not a good student, right? He is not a sincere student. That's what happens. Uh, otherwise, also so we can try to find out the reasons. Yeah. But how, how many times do we do that? That's my question. Right? How many times do we actually do that? 
do we actually call him after the class and say hey you were late yesterday today you were late today also is there a genuine problem or the second day when he comes what do we do we go have hammer and tongs you know we we start shouting at him you know yesterday also you were late today also what is this your habit you think you know this is dharmshala and things whatever dialogues come to our mind you know we, uh, we yes. start uh, throwing those dialogues at first lines at him right But that, that's yes. natural. That's natural. Why? <laughs> and why does it happen? Because we took two incidents of that student coming late, and we generalize it to his entire personality. Okay, he is too late. Lucky, banda. He is too late. Come on. Right? Now it might so have happened that in his three years in the college, he has been late only for four lectures ever. Right? Once in first semester, once probably in the third semester, and coincidentally back to back twice in the fifth semester. तीन साल में बंदा सिर्फ चार बार लेट आया बट इट सो हैपन दैट इन योर केस इट बैक टू बैक हैपन इन टू डेज ऑन द वेरी फर्स्ट टू लेक्चर्स व्हाट डिड यू डू बट यू जनरलाइज इट बट ये भी तो हो सकता है बट ये भी तो कि सम रीजन के वजह से कुछ कारण के वजह से वो डिले कर रहा है ये भी तो हो सकता है रीजन जानना बहुत जरूरी है सर अगर रीजन नहीं जानेंगे तो हम उसको पर हो सकता है व्हाट एग्जैक्टली माय पॉइंट एग्जैक्टली बट हाउ मेनी ऑफ अस डू दैट दैट इज माय क्वेश्चन That, that that's the question mark as teachers how many times how yes, many of us yes. and the, this coming to class is a very simple example i have taken this is not only this coming to class a student is not performing good in your assignments three assignments back to back is submitting late what do we do five me say okay let's submit it five me say do let's submit it five out one out of five two out of five late marks cut but do we call that student say hey you have been submitting the assignments late why yes we try to find out the reason sir right? see and it works everywhere Yeah, yeah, you might. So you are a good teacher, right? But so the point I'm trying to say is that's that's how our mind works. That's how our mind works. You know, a, a politician comes up and, and talks something that you don't uh, something funny, right? Or or, or uh, speaks up something not right. One bar hua, two bar hua. We generalize. So we tend to generalize people, their behavior. One bar, two bar. Somebody does something, and without know, we, we don't know their life history, and we are like, how many times in the relation this happens? You know, you, you, you might have faced that, or you might have seen the movie. You know that you you call someone, or even you no, know, with your colleagues, friends, family members also. Somebody calls you, you did not pick up the call for some reason. Okay. And uh, one time, and then it skipped your mind. You did not call back. Okay. Now you have you have known that person for so many years. You have been talking to them almost on phone. But they called you last week. You did not pick up the phone, and then you forgot to call back. Right. Then a three four days later, they again called you back, and you were again in a lecture maybe at that time. So you were in the class like this. You saw, but you just cut the call. You thought I'll call better later, but then you again had back to back call lectures and meetings. Who the marks are nickel gay, and then again you did not call back. At the next time, the third time, that person meets you in person. What does he say? You know, you have changed. You, you don't even pick up my calls. You never phone me. You don't call me. What the hell? Ten years I am talking to you, bro. Just because twice I did not pick up the phone, you just label me as a person who never picks up your call. Happens or not? Right? We do it. People around it. What is happening? We are generalizing those events. Now, why generalizing is is good in some sense? It, a lot of our theoretic the, theory or concepts are based on that. You know, you our, all our hypothesis testing is based on that. That we do pick up something, and if, if in some cases it is valid, then we say okay, this is valid across, right? A vaccine testing, you are not testing the vaccine on every person in the, the world. You test the vaccine on hundred people, two hundred people, thousands of people, and if the result is good, you generalize. Okay, okay, for this three thousand people, the vaccine did not cause any side effects, so we can assume that it will not cause any side effect for any other human being. What are you doing? You are generalizing it. So it's good in in those ways. Right? But when we start generalizing people's behavior and creating image about them accordingly, now what? Guess what? What's the interesting fact here? Your students are also doing the same thing about you. You go to the class, the first lecture you deliver a very. That's why they say the first first impression. की जो बात हम करते हैं important. First lecture you do a very 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 you know uh, boring class. Do not speak well. Probably whatever reason, maybe you might be a good teacher. But probably that day you had fever. You just had a fight with your spouse in the morning, or the HOD or the principal had just shouted at you before the class, or you had just received a notification. You know that you did not get the promotion that you were expecting. For, for whatever reason, your mind you are not in a good state of the mind. You you are not. Uh, and plus, let's say you have got a headache. Still, you are a good teacher. You are committed, so you go to the class that I will go and teach. But obviously, teaching is an art, I say, and you can deliver the best of the art only when you are both mentally, emotionally, and physically fit and sound. Right. Otherwise, it's, it's difficult. So you go to the class, you do your best, but the students find it boring. Right. Which was natural since you are not in the best of the physical and emotional state. And then the next class happens same way. What happens? Now you are labeled as a boring teacher. 
they won't even wait for the third lecture they won't wait for the semester to come and see you know maybe this teacher was not very good today maybe she was not a good mood maybe this was one topic she was not very expert at but she is very good at that so let's wait no two lectures and you have been branded as a teacher who's not good a teacher who does not know anything three questions or, or in your first lecture the kids ask you three questions and out of those three questions you for some reason you are unable to answer for the two questions and you are labeled as a teacher who is incompetent what are they doing they are generalizing right now i'm not defending their side but that that's a natural the way people think and the reason i'm talking about is that we should realize that that while one thing we generalize people people are also generalizing our behaviors so when we talk about relating to the students very important right that am i generalizing too much i say bol dete nahi millionaires to sare bakwas hai are they really these are the millionaires who are who are, who are building up unicorns and businesses right and then we we label so two four millionaires say experience kharab hua we label it you know so everywhere that's that you, know, you, you go to a, a, a couple of religious places maybe sometimes in some cases and probably somebody cheated you there a couple of beggars cheated you you're like you know this beggars at religious places are all all frauds what are you doing we generalizing so next time when you are making a statement like all everywhere always you always do this everyone is like this all the time this happens you know or har har bar bura luck mere sath hi hota hai do bar life mein kuch bura incidents ho gaya do bar life mein because of some bad luck you miss the promotion you label yourself as a, as unlucky person kare mere sath aisa hamesha hota hai you generalize it. and that is harmful right so that place of mental uh, mental play example so keep that in mind in your interaction with the student second is distortion that when you, the, the, the input comes up right now now you know uh, in the shark tank ka example we are taking couple of time that ashneer grover and a couple of other sharks sometimes they were bad sometimes they were good but you generalize oh ye ta aise hi karta hai baba means ban gaye logo ke you know namita thapar ka ye means chal raha hai aajkal ke is not my expertise i am out she doesn't say it to everyone but yeah the, and, and they did not happen at the end of the season ke half season mein 70% times she has said those, those memes started coming up after two or three episodes people did not even know that, that that's how the remaining episodes are going to be but they started generalizing second is distortion we normally distort the meaning you know fact this one thing that's fact and even and normally we say the event in itself does not have a meaning we attach a meaning to the event and we attach a meaning so what what happens a lot of time again a simple example in in your relationship if you are married or even if you are in a relationship with somebody right, or even in friends we got some close friend have you seen this or experienced this or this that you text somebody that in a relationship by times we are right and, and so on for some reason that person does not respond to you right husband wife spouse girlfriend boyfriend or best friend or whoever no you are very connected with it could be just a friend also and then once or twice they did not respond to you right and they might be genuinely busy genuinely occupied or or they might really forgot right but what do you say no you don't love me anymore how many times have you seen the movies this scenes they come right ki from they show to ek baar to two two baar with the guy did not know uh, uh, come up to the expectation of the girl and suddenly she's i think it's not working right L- let's break up what's happening here there was no 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 intention of that person to disrespect you right to ignore you there was no reduction in his feelings for you or her feeling for you but you distorted it fact kuch aur tha fact ye tha ki aapka phone do baar nahi uthaya that's it it does not necessarily mean that the person has stopped loving you since then when when did that become a major of metric of love right so again personal example when i used to you know early days again i said i came from a culture so again all of us most of us would have come that culture that when you walk around and you when you see a teacher coming across you wish her right good morning sir good morning good afternoon at least in the college campus any time a teacher is crossing bhale wo din mein 10 bar aapko cross hoga every time you see that faculty you normally know you just uh, uh, thoda sa jhuk ke wish good morning sir good morning ma'am and then when you are talking when you see students coming up a part of us is expecting now i don't know even if you realize this or not abhi but subconsciously when a student comes in you know you are talking to your colleague you are walking you are in the middle of a discussion with your colleague and you are going back uh, to the corridor and you see a bunch of kids coming up right and a part of you suddenly your subconscious mind suddenly starts preparing okay now ab ye log to good morning bolenge and you are already ready to answer it happens or not right before they actually wish you 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 are mentally prepared to reply to their good morning or good afternoon but then what happens you are fine morning you are walking up No, and there's a student that's rushing fast across you. बहुत जल्दी जल्दी तेज में चल रहा है, and he looks at you. You look at him or her. Your eyes eye contact happens. 
बट दैट शूड डज नॉट इवन स्माइल एट यू फर्गेट अबाउट विशिंग यू गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून वो स्माइल भी नहीं करता एज इफ वी डज नॉट नो यू एंड वॉक्स अवे and suddenly what comes to your mind sir we can, no, no, we can take the initiative no no we can take the initiative and wish them good morning we can wish them good morning so see i am not talking about what we can or we should right see for what we can we should is the ideal world i am talking about what we actually do right the real world and the real world is most of the cases like okay, some people might not but most of the cases if you anyone like me you would have that thought in the mind कितना एरोगेंट हो गया फर्स्ट ईयर में था तो जब मिलता था विश्वर्प था एंड टुडे ही जस्ट पास बाय मी दैट मी डिड नॉट स्माइल डिड नॉट इवन विश मी सच डिसरिस्पेक्ट सच इंसल्टिंग बिहेवियर हैपेंस और नॉट आर यू नॉट बाउंड टू थिंक एंड वी आर नेचुरल आई एम नॉट इफ वी हैव दैट इट्स टोटली परफेक्ट वी आर ह्यूमन बीइंग्स एंड बिकॉज़ वी एक्सपेक्टेड इज अ स्टूडेंट एटलीस्ट देख के विश नहीं किया स्माइल तो कर सकता था जाते हुए एकदम ब्लैंकली चला गया and then if if it 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 happens that no he he would just came to second year or third year the level of second year mein aa gaya na par khul gaye iske now he's got wings now he's no he is the is is the senior so why would he respect teacher first year mein to darte what but the fact of the matter might be that he just got a emergency call about some family member or some friend who landed up in an accident or some emergency situation and is in the hospital and he was rushing to the hospital and he was so devastated uske to tote ude bete he had no sense of what's happening he was totally kind of uh, devastated he saw you youth and he uski aankhe aapse mili bhi and you thought thought is but he did not even register you uski aankh mein he saw you but he did not notice you because he was totally preoccupied with something else usko dikhai nahi ke samne se ma'am aur sir he did not have any intentions of disrespecting you or ignoring you what happened that was the fact but me thinking that he's disrespecting me and that probably next time when he's 2 minutes late for assignment solution when is 1 minute late in the class how am i going to behave otherwise i would have allowed him one or two minutes late but now yesterday only he ignored me along right did not even wish and that's in my mind and now next day he comes one minute late to the class i am going to respond from that mindset because you know you you are such an arrogant that you come to the class late you don't respect teachers and it's like what happened i i don't know he didn't because he does not even remember that he he crossed you yesterday He was in a different mindset. उतने तो वो ध्यान में ही है. He doesn't even remember see having seen you. So he is worried. He is he is he is confused. Okay, what wrong did I do with this teacher? Why is she behaving like this with me? Why is he behaving with this with me like this? That's the distortion. What happens? And third is deletion. A lot of times we keep deleting a lot of things, right? So even while I am telling a lot of things to you, right? Not everything that I am telling you you are registering. right some examples are are get more stick in your mind some some examples are not and everybody is deleting different things how often it happens that you are traveling to the same road to work every day right uh, and you never noticed uh, let's say a medical store on on that road or you never notice a pet pet uh, food, food shop on that road every day you are going for years but and you're seeing that but you never know and if somebody had asked you on that very road yahan pe pet shop ka hai you would like pata nahi bhai aage pooch lo ask for it but then one day you have a pet and now everywhere you go you're looking for pet shop even if you don't want to buy but now you know where all you have a pet shop what changed you're looking at that shop daily but your mind was not registering why because you are not interested in pet shop because you did not have a pet to so, carry my pet shop now i i i have been traveling to simbosi for 10 years now uh, and i go on a bike with my friend my colleague so when in 2013 14 i was already 4 years and back then i used to go on bus so daily we used to go by bus and come back by bus really once in a month would we go uh, uh, on a bike or a car because the road was not very good there over there right but my my friend he used to often uh, go on a bike uh, even though he had a bus of membership but he would go on bike also and since he was regular so he knew everything so uh, one fine day he and we were roommates also so uh, one one fine day uh, he was in the uh, uh, in the town he was it is home town and i got laid i is the bus i went by and i went back to the college on a way back just a few kilometers away from the college and the return uh, there was a puncture tire right and then i was stranded and this kind of skirts of the city it's not in the city totally outside the city highway se bahar gaye and then i was worried how we do at 6 pm already in the evening right it's rainy season and then like, we do again a tire puncture shot right? and i'm i'm worried and then i suddenly my smart mind wakes up i take out my phone i call that that, that friend of mine and say you know I, I, i'm standing here or a gaadi puncture ho gaya what do i do and he asked me okay tell me where you are exactly and then i told tell him that i'm i'm here uh, uh, in front of that 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 shop over there there's a building that color wo building ka naam hai so and so and i write exactly for him he says do do let left to you just 
10 meters away from you or 5 meters away from you there is a mechanic and there is a there is a puncture shop and then i just look around i'm standing at the same position i just turn left and start looking kaha par and suddenly i notice those yellow colored tires i've been standing on that spot for 10 minutes i did not notice that and i've been traveling on that road for 3 years by then daily almost never notice the reason it was not like that my eyes never saw them my eyes would have seen that puncture shop hundreds of time it simply did not register because it was like ya ko zarurat hi nahi padti cheez ki to why would i notice right so that's the deletion of work and what happens some it, it helps us keep sane but sometimes when 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 you no know, uh, when there are important things that get deleted your mind does not you no know, uh, register them that's where the problem happens so just a minute let me uh, <coughs> okay cool so after this filter three filter so everybody's mind deletes distorts and uh, generalizes differently then is it leads to a internal representation of whatever is in your mind and now whatever your behavior is whatever your perception that you are talking about your world view your personality you, your thought process is based is driven out of this internal representation that is formed and since the filters are different everybody has different filters everybody deletes distorts generalizes in a different proportion different things the internal representation is different to each person right and that's why uh, your image right so for example if if i ask some somebody who, who is a bjp supporter who is a narendra modi supporter right and i tell okay tell me about narendra modi what happens suddenly he is going to talk on all the good things about about the the, the prime minister right and fine but if nobody is perfect everybody has pluses minuses but this guy has deleted anything that was worth questioning right then i have somebody who is totally uh, uh, no opposes uh, the prime minister who oppo- opposes bjp usko pucho he is going to list down all the things that he thinks is a failure of the government and there are so many good successes also but it's not good because he has deleted his mind has simply deleted all the good things that the government has done and his mind is just registering only the negatives so for him his internal representation is that this government is not doing anything for the other guy his his mind has deleted all the places where the government could have done better but they did not do it all those things are deleted only the good things are there so for him they are good and then we have a fight you know you you are supporter you are opposer and we, by the same person same government doing the same thing in the two different camps one so strong supporters other so strongly opposing and not seeing any success what's wrong it's the filters that they have and the filters are based on what filters are based on meta programs right and meta programs is beyond the scope of discussion today right because i am not going to do full day session on nlp where we talk about all these things but meta programs are basically the generic by default you know so for example uh, you know we have software uh, operating systems in our laptop right i i am logging from a mac so i have i got a mac operating system some of you have a windows operating system some might have linux operating system so based on the operating system also the, the look the feel everything changes right same meta programs are the operating systems of our mind right so meta programs are there and then this values what do i value so my filters also depend on what i value right so if i value if i value peace if i value the uh, uh, no kya bolte hai usko non violence right then anything any place any event any leader in, in any instance uh, you know uh, uh, any organization that's promoting violence i will delete that i will avoid that because that's against my value right when i read something in the, in a book or somewhere and there's something about violence i will read but i ye kaun se suna wo kaun se nikal diya right second is beliefs right so my my filters what i generalize what i distort also depend on if i believe that the young students are all you know they don't want to study inko bas time pass karna hota hai they sleep late they just wasting the parents money if as a teacher i have those beliefs right then whenever such instance happens a student comes late to the to the class or, or does some mischief in the class suddenly i am going to distort it delete it generalize it and start reacting because i'm coming from that belief hero hai hi waise right so if i have certain belief that is developed in my mind about my students about my colleagues about a particular organization you know tata ke bare mein belief hai so anything tata does we look and same thing if reliance does if amani does we are going to react differently when mukesh amani does something or reliance does something still won't look at yaar kuch to personal fayda hoga kahi to paisa kama raha hai even if he's doing with the purest genuine intention And same thing when Tata's do, Ratan Tata comes and says, "You like no, you don't even have an ounce of doubt you know, because why the beliefs, the way the beliefs that you have about Ambani and the beliefs that you have about Tata are different, and that is why when the same instance both of them are doing the same thing, the way you are deleting, distorting, generalizing is different. 
right so belief could be about your students belief could be sometimes you have a belief you know ye a division ke bacche acche b division ke aise hai computer science students are good mechanical lab not good this college students are good that college students are bad you have beliefs about about places maharashtrians are like this gujarat is like acha bihari hai na ye to aise hi hoga ye up ka student hai na ye to aise hi hoga you know okay this guy has come from south he is going to be star- he, he he is supposed to be star- smart and intelligent you know beliefs again you have beliefs about race you have beliefs about color you have beliefs about gender okay she is a girl student she might she must be more sincere than the boys right subconsciously we have these beliefs right and, and <laughs> your beliefs about 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 the location about about the family background beliefs about the religion sometimes you have beliefs about the community religion okay you are from that particular community that particular city that particular region that particular caste you are supposed to be like that so even one instance they do now it's already believe that they are like that so just one instance is enough for you to generalize ki aisa hi tha as compared to somebody from the some other other country other city other community other religion doing the same thing 10 times you still not generalize you like okay ye to na kabhi kabhi ho jata hai theek hai right so that also is very important sometimes when you are looking how you are interacting how you you relate with the students this this things happen unconsciously and we do not do this intentionally we do not this do this to cause harm or create any divide it's just how our mind is right and the the reason i'm talking about it is if we are aware we can control we cannot eliminate this totally but if we are aware we can control it to some extent by now the next time when you're thinking creating an impression an image about anyone based on on the who the student is what the family background is what is race caste religion region city country state is ask yourself am i am i am i being subject to this this belief this this wrong filters right then sometimes the past decisions also affect so we as human beings you know we tend to like to defend our decisions right so simple example let's say if you have voted for a particular party whatever that party is right if you have voted for a party right because you believe and you told all your friends you know vote for aap vote for arvind kejriwal vote for kejriwal for example right and again not against or in favor of this but i'm just giving using an example and then let's say after the election no uh, you told your your family members also and, and they agreed they did not agree it's a different thing but you voted for aap aap aadmi party right and then after voting you know after when they come into power they do certain things that you are not happy with everybody is oh ye kya kar diya iske liye power mein now your friends come and tease you ye le bada aap wala aaya tha na see you what all are what are in kejriwal what aap aadmi party or what congress or what bjp whatever that party is right and now internally you also realize ke boss galti ho gaya I thought I I trusted this party. I trusted the leader. Name me aage. You know, or usme you know, election manifesto me aage, fake advertisement me aage. But and now part of you realizes that no, this is I probably did wrong. But since it was your decision to vote for that party, I'm at the party Congress, BJP, whatever, Shiv uh, Sena, whatever the party is. Now you want to make sure that no, you want to project that my decision was right. You, it's it's difficult for us to accept that my decision was wrong. If you now say, oh yes. is the world is not doing something right bjp is doing something wrong congress is not doing this right after having voted for the party then you are you no know, kind of opposing your own decision which which our mind does not want so what we do to just justify our decision we still keep supporting that guy are nahi nahi ukesh diwar you don't know you you think as any this is even even internally you believe that what is doing is wrong you will still justify that guy why because you voted for him and you don't want to prove yourself wrong happens or not Right? So it's very important. Our past decisions. If I have taken a decision in the past, and now I want to always justify my decision, even if later I realize that decision was wrong. So ask yourself, कभी कभी sometimes that the decision I'm taking, the impression I'm making, the, the things that I'm doing, my actions, are these really the justified actions, or am I just being, you know, biased because I decided something in the past which was wrong, and I don't want to accept that. So I'm just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, even if I don't solve, even if I know it's a lost, lost cause. Sometimes the memories, you know, you have some memories that, that trigger. You know, so you see somebody, and he reminds you of someone else. But because you had, you did not like that someone else, unconsciously, कभी कभी भी होता है कि you end up you not know, behaving with that person in a way that person does not deserve. Just because he he reminds you of someone. There's a student who reminds you of a classmate who bullied you, for example. Now this kid has got nothing to do with that bully. But every time you see this, you you are reminded of that bully. So naturally, वो अगर थोड़ी सी भी गलती करेगा ना, आप पढ़ जाओगे उसके ऊपर. Even if it's just smallest mistake, smallest uh, disturbance in the class you would cr- would go crazy and angry on you would not go so angry on other students but that's true because already part of it the moment you see you know so think of that is it happening to you with some students 
right at the moment you start relating this this all then relates to how what state you are in what mental state are you in that mental state then covers what my physiology is how i'm going to react whether i'm going to be happy smiling whether i'm going to be kusat khadu frustrated straight angry or i'm going to be a jolly person and that's going to then dictate my behavior so that's the entire cycle at play uh, when we talk about relate, relating to people and uh, relating to students is human moment and it plug in my charger are you able to relate so far our thoughts do have a strong impact on changing our behavior seriously i'll tell you a simple thing right if i if i tell you to turn your camera on and if you think yeah this guy you know what what this dude is he what what is he like 25 year old you know i have more experience than this 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 professor here a speaker is speaking and he's asking to turn camera on i don't know why should i if that's the thought are you going to turn the camera on but if on the other hand if you think you know whoever he is i don't care what his age is what his experience is right but if he's here as a resource person he he knows a thing or two more than me right and if he's asking me it's it's, it's just it's just like the way i expect my students to turn my camera on as a as a sign of respect i should turn the camera on if that's the thought what's going to be the behavior right so our behaviors actually stem from our thought right before we act normally we, we say no think before you act we usually think a lot before we act right so that, that that's a common practice that that keeps happening with us now since the presentation is not coming just let me continue because it anyways unfortunately for some reason i don't know why why today the presentation had to act up like this there were a couple of very interesting slides that i wanted to show uh, and that could have been done only through slides but since the slides are not here uh, let me go through uh, one, one very important uh, you know point over here uh, we have got our last 5 6 minutes and i wanted to keep it for q and a but one thing uh, one slide ka chala gaya i just wanted to show right very important and uh, not show because it's not uh, coming up but i'll just discuss it so how many of you have seen uh, uh, the movie three idiots most of us have seen that how many of us have seen the movie tare zameen par so most of us can relate with with amir khan as a teacher in tare zameen par right most of us have seen relate means most of us know what what amir khan's character was there in tare zameen par right and most of us also know what boman irani's character the the, the virus virus sastrabude was in three idiots right now i have a simple question for you if you have to choose a kid for you, a teacher for your for your kid Right? If you have a kid of your own, or your your uh, your friends, brothers, or your kid, your nephew, niece, right, or your neighbor's kid, a kid that you really love and care for, and if you had to choose a teacher for that kid, and you had two options, one teacher who is exactly like Amir Khan in Tare Zameen Par, right, not very highly educated, does not have Stanford, Harvard, and MIT degrees, is not a PhD, does not have a lot of research projects, does not have a lot of publications, is is not no uh, uh, having a patents and all. but he understands the students and the kid right that 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 kid's requirements he cares he is so passionate and he actually goes beyond his uh, call of duty to help that kid right or just because he connects he relates to that kid and the other teacher right that the virus sastra but the virus character phd from the best of the best institutions in the world best of the best research projects hundreds of patents and hundreds of research publications so many technical sessions chair and you know uh, maybe double phd post doctorate from here and there and so many laurels but you know how he used to treat the students if you had to teach, choose one of them as a teacher for for a kid you care for who would you choose quickly in the chat box who would you choose anybody wants to choose virus asrabud as a teacher for your kid a a a a a virus of sir budde which you know all all his laurels or his phd is always flaunting about himself you know i have done this phd mere paas itna research hai maine yahan se phd ka i know this i know that i am this and so 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 blah 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 and just because i am virus of sir budde you should be respecting right none of you wants that that character as a teacher for your student for 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 your kid right but then how many of us when we go to the class end up acting like virus of sir budde and i'm not asking i'm asking you to reply here just answer yourself this is a question that for self reflection 
Right? You need to ask yourself. Right? Don't reply to me here. Right? You're not accountable to anybody. But how many of us? And I'm not saying again that Viru Sastra Budhika character is an exaggeration. That's too much on the extreme. Of course, none of us is that extreme, right? So obviously, nobody, none of you is that extreme. But at least, how many of us are twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent to some extent? We have characteristics of Viru Sastra Budhika. Right? How many of us are always focused more on that? How many of us actually act like that Amir Khan's character in Tala Zameen with our students? And I'm sure some of you might be. There are always exceptions. But in general, right? And don't reply over here. This is something you just want to ask yourself. I'm not asking for, for the responses because even to some extent, I do that, right? So I know. Right? So this is this is a matter of reflection for us, right? and that because we're talking about relating to the students. You know? And I, let me ask you then: What is the difference between both of them? I mean, other if by all the parameters that UGC, AICT, NAC, NBA, your college, and everybody has set up. If I look at from all the parameters, if I set up an interview panel, who has? I should give me an answer. And some of you must be heads of the department, principals, deans, people who are in the selection panel. When when you select a faculty, right, based on your parameters, who do you think is more likely to get selected? If these two people come, Amir Khan or Virus Asrab with this character in the interview, who are you more likely to select? Right. And even if you are not somebody who is into selection, but if you know who 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 is more likely to get selected. I'm not asking who should be selected. I'm not talking about ideas. Who should be? Who should be? I'm talking who usually in the reality who gets selected. In reality, what are the parameters on which you evaluate that teacher when you select him? Right. So ideally, we all want to select, right? But in reality, that virus has through this character is the one who will get selected. So my question is, I normally ask this question usually when I conclude my session, right? Yeah, and I hope all of you understand Hindi. Uh, if not, I'll translate also. But I, I want to say it in Hindi first for the sake of the fact. कि अपने बच्चे के लिए आमिर खान चाहिए, right? और जब दो हजार हजार पांच हजार बच्चे जो बाकी पैरेंट्स ने अपने भरोसे दिए, उनको पढ़ाने के लिए जब टीचर हायर करोगे तो वीरू सस्त्र बुद्धि हायर करो, right? And then you say politicians are hypocrites, right? So just 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 a put for thought. So so again, for people who don't understand Hindi very well, what I want to say is that when when it's about your kid, you want somebody like Amir Khan to be to be hired as a teacher. But when you're hiring a faculty to teach those thousands of students that parents left at, at you, you you on or trusting you, when you're selecting a teacher for that, you end up hiring a new sister. Oh, he's got so many patents. He's got so many. In fact, you, your application form has those criteria. If you don't have ten research papers, don't apply. The, somebody like Amir Khan, you say that we would select Amir Khan. Who the first bar will get? Because he doesn't have research papers, he doesn't have patents, he doesn't have post doctorate from IITs and Massachusetts and Stanford. वो तो बिचारा application stage में बाहर हो गया. The entire pipeline जो interview में आ रहा है all virus sir बुद्धि are coming over there. So I don't know. Isn't it high time that we start looking from that perspective? And the problem is because we know that kind of people get selected, we tend to become like that. While I would want to become Amir Khan, I would like to. Everybody of us would like to be like Amir Khan. Then, but the question is, is that if I become like that, मेरे को मेरा मेरा खुद का organization निकाल देगा. इसके तो रिसर्च पेपर नहीं है इसके तो पेटेंट्स नहीं है डजेंट हैव फंडेड यू गो टाटा बाय सो इवन डू वी नो दैट वी हैव टू बी लाइक दैट बट वी नो द द पैरामीटर्स ऑन व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू बी सिलेक्टेड अपॉइंटेड प्रमोटेड आर द पैरामीटर्स दैट मैच विद सस्ट ऑफ दिस प्रोफाइल सो नोइंगली अनोइंगली वांटिंगली अनवांटिंगली नो हैप्पीली और नॉट नॉट वी एंड अप लाइविंग लाइक दैट बिकॉज़ दैट्स वेयर योर करियर प्रोग्रेशन लाइज एंड अल्टीमेटली एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इट्स अ मैटर ऑफ ब्रेड एंड बटर दैट नोबडी इज डूइंग सोशल सर्विस राइट Very important point, and the reason you all selected uh, Amit Khan over Virus Sastra Budde, just one reason I want to. Why do you think we all selected Amit Khan over Virus Sastra Budde? No, no qualifications, no PhDs, no, no, no laurels, no patents. Only one thing, and that one thing was that he could relate to the students. So I want to just bring it circle back, and I started saying that, that if you want to be a good teacher, a better teacher, I just wanted to prove it with a live example. That apart from your qualifications and all, right? Most important thing is that can you relate to the students? If you have to relate to the students, how do you relate? You start focusing. You start giving time on thinking. What do they think? What do they feel? What do they believe in? What do they see around us? Right. And to understand that, you need, need to understand how do they pursue the world? What are their filters? How do they generalize this thought or, or, or delete things? How, what are their beliefs? What are their values? What past they come from? Right. So and. And normally, you know, uh, uh, just a concrete example. I ended up watching the entire series, Game of Thrones, and, and this up to kya hai, tabish mein wo sacred games and the money heist thing, only because I realized that my students are watching them. And in the class, if I had to relate to them, if you come to my class, my examples, most of them are in every class. There is at least one example, one direct, indirect reference to one of the latest TV series that they are watching. 
the moment i talk about that the moment i say you know when somebody is creating a disturbance in my class my dialogue is ke bada gaya to unde bandra what's happening in the moment i'm i'm kind of a little bit thoda insulting ka dose bhi de raha hu i'm keep making the kid short but everybody is in the class start class starts laughing and the second thing they feel that okay this guy also understands our language right while his generation the entire faculty generation is criticizing sacred games because it's not a good show and all and i'm not promoting it but he also understands our language he also watches that and the moment they realize that is where that us versus we ka difference goes out because now they don't see somebody you are somebody different you are a faculty you are a different breed you are a different species they see you no know, this this guy is like us he talks the same dialogue he watches the same tv series he, he interacts in the same way right and then that happens that is where the the, the point that my hod made in the beginning you know the us versus them ka difference that goes away and you actually become a team so that's my submission with that i would like to conclude and i hope that we could I, whatever i could share of course there was uh, honestly speaking there were a couple of more points i wanted to share but because the ppt didn't work but anyways i'm going to come back uh, maybe on 10 there's another session that i'm going to take so in the beginning of the ten, ten, of that session i'll make sure 10 15 minutes i will cover the points that i could not meanwhile i'll figure out the ppt issue so that on, on that day the ppt thing uh, this problem doesn't happen and uh, I, i'll cover those points that i could not because of that issue today and then i'll move on to the topic for the day on that day uh, with that let us conclude thank you so much i hope that uh, there was some, some some value addition over here whatever the feedback uh, is you want to share and i would really like to be connected i normally like to do one thing at the end so if anybody wants to talk uh, again ma'am you can go ahead and whatever concluding remarks if you have all the session i, I mean while just i just i just want to share a link because we are already at 10 12 or 4 4 minutes beyond time okay thank you so much thank you so much sir for such a motivational and uh, interactive talk and we have learned a lot from uh, this session you have actually motivated us with how to relate with the students and uh, using this uh, neuro linguistic approach and uh, uh, most of we are from the teaching background and uh, most of our participants are the teachers and faculty members so i think now with this uh, after this session will full of enthusiasm and full of motivation and will and with this full of enthusiasm uh, we will enter into the class so i uh, i hope so and Just we will try to become the amir khan <laughs> 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 just one request if we can just turn your cameras on for 10 seconds i would like to have a screenshot with all of you because i'm too good uh, we don't putting on linkedin so i'm going to put a make a post on linkedin about the session and I, it won't look good if there is no only this s and abcd written on the screen so all participants please turn on your camera right and i'll share my linkedin profile link also in the chat if anybody wants to connect feel free to yeah so let me just quickly okay why can i see so many uh, just a minute I need to change the layout or what? Yes. Okay. Uh, our next speaker has also also joined the session. Yes. Okay, done. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you back uh, on ten. Till then, have a good time. Enjoy the MTP. One more session will be taken by Professor Smile uh, on tenth, tenth of February. That is last session on tenth of February. So thank you so much. Sir.